Yo guys, what is up? Max and Orlands video, and today we're going over Slampire. This is a unkillable Graveborn Berserker build that focuses on increasing our health as much as possible to deal the maximum amount of damage we can with Dire Sacrifice, as well as being absurdly tanky and using our action skill on basically a 4-5 to five second cooldown. We are spamming slams, we're dealing tons of companion damage. This is by far and away not the fastest boss killing build or highest damage build but it is extremely fun to play and you just don't die in chaos chambers you can eat spicy water you can tank barrel hits uh, it's pretty absurd the survivability this build has without really compromising too much in the damage department so i wanted to share with you guys this is actually the longest i've worked on a single build so far in waterlands i'm super happy with the way that this came out um so i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you enjoy the build and uh let's get right into it so we're going to start with our skill tree and then we'll get into our gear specifics and mobbing and bossing and then the uh, hero points. So we're starting with Dire Sacrifice. Dire Sacrifice is a action skill that is boosted by dark magic ability damage or dark magic damage ability damage and area damage and health. And the health part is what we're leaning into. Dire Sacrifice does a bonus damage or gets a bonus damage based off of the amount of health that is sacrificed. Meaning that when we do this slam, the more HP we have, the more damage Dire Sacrifice is going to do. Or the more HP that we have when we actually do that slam, the more damage is going to deal. And we're leaning into that with the Berserker. The Berserker gives us tons of health, tons of health regen because we want to have a lot of health as much as possible when we do our slams and also cooldown. Now, this is where the big synergy comes in. Dire Sacrifice is a big AoE slam. We have it hitting currently on the setup for about 200 to 250,000 damage before like any Butt Stallion buffs. So we're, we're running around hitting 200, 250,000 damage on a slam in a giant AoE. And that is going to insta-kill anything that gets close to us. Blood of the Fallen stacks. This skill is whenever we kill an enemy, we're going to get action skill cooldown rate reduction. But when we hit multiple enemies, we get a ton of cooldown. And the way I have this set up right now is I slam, I kill two to three enemies, and I have Dire Sacrifice on a three to four second cooldown. It's actually absurd. So we can constantly be slamming, and while we're slamming, we're also going to be focusing on our companions. And our companions are going to be killing things for us, which not only will Dire Sacrifice be feeding us cooldown, but our companions will be feeding us cooldown to deal more and more damage. Now, let's get into the skill tree, and then we'll uh, do the gear. So, in the Graveborn skill tree, I went for some uh, spell cooldown rate because I'm using some spell enchants, and when I activate my spell, I'm going to get Faithful Thralls. More on that in a second. Uh, dark Pact is going to give us increased dark magic damage. This is super important. Harvest is more damage for our companions. Our dark Hydras will summon Hydras for us, and those Hydras will get Faithful Thralls. So, those Hydras are... are uh, we're using Faithful Thralls as another way to scale Dire Sacrifice. So getting a bunch of companions out on the field is going to give me more Dire Sacrifice damage. And then our most important skill that we're working with in this tree is Ascension. Maximum health and spell damage is increased for a long duration. Now we'll actually be turning that spell damage into Dire Sacrifice damage. And so getting this to stack is really important. And this is a 120% spell damage increase and a 120% maximum health increase which is a ginormous increase and once again we're going to be turning that spell damage into ability damage and then max health is already going to give us more slam damage in the berserker tree we're picking up frost damage increases icebreaker to give us more damage against enemies that are chilled well, i'll show you how we're chilling enemies in a second old ways for more damage when we're close to enemies damage reduction a little bit of instinct just for some reload speed because we're going to be throwing companions unarmored defense is where we're getting a ton of hp from now, this skill is a little tricky to understand. The bigger the shield that you put on with unarmored defense, the more health you get. So, bigger shield, more health, more health, more damage. That's what we're going to... I'll show you my shield in a second. Uh, Blood Frenzy is going to it, give us maximum health restore, which is really nice because we're going to kill a bunch of enemies, get all the health back. And when we're at full health, we'll do more damage with Dire Sacrifice. But it also is going to restore our Enrage Timer. And our Enrage Timer is going to be up for 15 seconds but once again our dire sacrifice is constantly it's going to be happening way more than every 15 seconds so we're constantly enraged we're also getting ancient fury this is a double damage increase for dire sacrifice because it boosts area damage which boosts dire sacrifice and it boosts our health which also boosts dire sacrifice blast chill i'll talk about in a second and then blood of the fallen i already talked about so that is our skill treat now let's get into our gear
So you probably heard me mention that we're going to be turning spell damage into ability damage. And we're going to be doing that with the paradigm. The paradigm converts our spell damage into ability damage. And you've probably seen this on like spell shot builds converting spell damage into other things. We're going to be using it on the Graveborn because the Graveborn gets Ascension and do not sleep on Ascension. Ascension is a 120% spell damage in of itself. Just this alone is giving me 60% increased ability damage. That is a massive buff to our ability damage. And then on top of that, we're going to be rocking spell damage rings to get even more spell damage. I've got spell damage on my class mod. I'm getting so much ability damage just out of this, and I'm also increasing my spell damage. Now, why do we care about spell damage on this build? Well, because our companions are going to be doing spell damage. We are going to be using um, the fragmented rain or the frag fragment rain the fear knots which both deal spell damage or, or any fury or companions that you want i recommend the tr pixies or the hydra companions um these will deal spell damage for you and will help you clear out things faster and we're going to be boosting our spell damage so we're benefiting from that with our companions and our spell i'm going to be using a frost burn we'll talk about that in a second but we're basically making sure that all of our damage increases are being used properly in that our ability damage is increased and our companion damage is being increased by increasing our spell damage. On top of that, I'm using a master rune. A master rune is going to increase my companion damage by 25%. So that's a buff straight up for all of our companion damage. And we're using a master rune because it's got lots of capacity. If like, for example, I was to use a cursed wit, I would lose so much health because cursed wits simply don't have a lot of shield capacity. So the master rune is going to give us a big damage increase and also a big shield capacity, not the biggest shield capacity, but enough to give us enough health to like really destroy things. Now, in addition to that, I am using a snake stick. A snake stick is a melee weapon that when you hit an enemy with it, it summons a hydra. The hydra deals melee damage, which will proc blast chill for us. Now, blast chill and our weapons are going to be constantly procking icebreaker for us. Icebreaker is going to give us a multiplier for our dire sacrifice. So my companions that I'm throwing are cryo damage. They're being boosted by my cryo damage increases, and they're also procking Icebreaker for them to deal more damage and my um, dire sacrifice to also deal more damage. Now for my spell, I'm using the Frostburn. This is a blue unique spell that summons a bunch of Hydras in place. It summons three Hydras off of one cast, and it's got a absurdly low cooldown. It's got a cooldown of 12.8, which is very low for Hydra spells. I'm going to be honest, with the new Hydra spell buffs, uh, you could probably get away with just about any Hydra spell. Um, really, like, don't, it's not too specific. We're mainly using our Hydras four stacks of faithful thralls so the more hydras the better so that dire sacrifice will hit harder uh you could use a frost burn you could use multi-headed hydras you could use one of those like crazy like elemental blast ones that summon hydras to get like six hydras um there are a bunch of different hydra options uh, it's up to you whatever one you have is going to work for you um but yeah i'm currently just using the frost burn and then we get to our amulet for, for the amulet I'm using, you have a bunch of options. I'm using the Frenzied Wraith. This is going to give my companions 20% damage whenever they kill something or whenever I kill something, uh, which stacks up to 100%. This is absurd damage and is going to... When Remember, this is a slam build, but whenever our companions kill something, we get our slam back. So even though this isn't directly impacting our slam, we're going to be able to do it more if we're killing things faster. The other option is the Overflow Blood Bag of Heroism. This is reads while well, your health is full. Healing from dark magic increases maximum health. Now, this healing is very nice. It's great to get even more health. Uh, I found it wasn't like super needed, but if you want to go even more health and get even crazier health, the Blood Bag is a really, really nice option. I didn't find it as good for bossing and mobbing quite so as the Frenzied Wrath, just because that 100% companion damage is tough to compete with, besides just, just like a little bit more healing. But the blood bag is very very nice and then the last option would be a the urge which gives you cooldown whenever you use a spell and then whenever you use your action skill or your action skills on cooldown you get more spell damage that's also very nice but we're gonna just gonna benefit more from the direct companion damage increases if that was tough to follow showing on screen right now is all of my gear and my enchants real quick for an enchant breakdown i'm using the while action skill active increase elemental damage by 30 percent on my snake stick or 35 percent uh Really important, get Echo on your melee. If you can get Echo on your melee, even if it's not a snake stick, um, you're doing so much damage and 
all that damage is kind of going to waste if you don't have echo on your melee because you can just reproc basically a lot of that damage again as echo which for a slam build is super nice because uh you can sometimes have a little bit more difficulty killing beefy targets and echo kind of negates any of that um i am using the when a Greyborn action skill is activated gain 50 percent dark magic damage and 50 percent dark magic efficiency for 10 seconds this is really nice this is only for 10 seconds versus the dark magic enchant is for 60 seconds so if you're slamming a bunch uh, I recommend using this because you'll actually be able to keep up the dark magic damage and efficiency. But if you're using, for example, Reaper of Bones, it's actually better to use just the flat dark magic damage increase because uh, your goal is to stay in Reaper of Bones longer than 10 seconds. So for bossing with this build, I found that Dire Sacrifice is not very good. So we actually swapped to Reaper of Bones. Reaper of Bones is just a better bossing action skill. You can even use Dreadwind if you want. Um, but the biggest thing for bossing is just to use Dire Sacrifice. We're going to be efficiently using our Echo on our melee. And uh, you can swap from a Frostburn to a Buffmeister if you'd like for even more damage. Uh, the Frostburn is going to be really nice for Faithful Thralls, but Buffmeister will give us more spell damage. And once again, our companions are going to do spell damage. So this kind of goes from a like slam kind of to like an action skill or the um, a spell kill but as you can see my spell companions will do work for me and then i just weave in some uh some blast chill echo procs and yeah it's dead so yeah bossing is very nice on this build but uh, I, you do or you can make some quick adjustments to make it even better just by swapping to reaper of bones and either using a buff meister or the Frostburn, and just kind of focusing on procking those echo procs as your companions are dealing damage is the quickest way i found to whittle down any boss and one last thing, if you don't want to farm for a Paradigm, because farming for a Paradigm is actually pretty rough, uh, I recommend going for the Legendary Class Mod, the Scarlet Claw, which will give your Companion damage, convert conversion to Dark Magic damage, and enemies will take 20% increased Dark Magic damage. This is really nice because it's going to obviously increase the, your Dark Magic Slams by 20%. However, I don't think it's quite as min-maxed uh, for slam because you're going to be missing out on some of that ability damage and we're able to scale our damage off of both spell and ability damage, which is extremely nice using a paradigm. But the Scarlet Claw is a nice option if you don't want to go for that perfect class mod. For my hero points, I spec all the way into Constitution. Constitution is going to give me a ton of HP and ward, which is going to give us both more health because the more ward that we have the more health that we have and the more health that we have the more health that we have we're also increasing our status effect damage because we're going to be constantly procking status effects on things with our dire sacrifice and those dots will scale off of the damage that we did so those dots are very big and then i also spec into some skill cooldown now you could put this damage into crit damage just letting you know that from my experience dire sacrifice is not critting uh, i haven't seen dire sacrifice crit yet um, which is a little weird. I don't know if that's a bug or intentional, but just letting you know that I haven't seen it crit, so I don't think the ability crit hit is a, like, necessary stat for this build. And yeah, guys, that is going to do it for this setup. Uh, this is not the highest damage, fastest boss killing build in the game, but it does give you the comfort of just never dying in the chaos chambers. You can run through spicy water. You can get, you can eat barrel hits. Uh, you don't die to like mimics. It's pretty, it's pretty great. And it is a crazy fast at mobbing, especially obelisks. Uh, it does obelisk in literally like 30 seconds or under. It's pretty insane. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will catch y'all in the next one, guys. Take care. Peace. I was